What are your thoughts today, given uh, what's happened in 2020? Well, you know, it's hard to even keep track of the money supply now officially because the Federal Reserve isn't reporting about it as often as they were. Uh, but we know for a fact that it is exploding because you can look at the government's own numbers of tax revenues versus expenditures. And right now, for every three and a half uh, dollars the government spends, they only have a dollar in revenue. So where is that money coming from? And I mean, we're not getting it for free. So 70% of government spending is being borrowed. But who is the government borrowing from? Well, a large portion of it is the Federal Reserve. And when the government borrows from the Fed, the Fed prints the money to loan to the U.S. government. And so that is the inflation. Money supply is exploding. That's why you're seeing all these strong numbers for consumer spending, because consumers are simply spending the money that they're getting from the government. In fact, a lot of people are getting more money from the government now, unemployed, than they used to get from their employers when they had jobs. But there's a big difference. When you are working and being compensated for your productivity, that's not necessarily inflation because you're adding goods and services to the economy that other people can buy. But if you're just sitting at home and collecting a government check, you're not adding any goods and services into the economy, but you're getting money to take goods and services out of the economy. But what that means is that prices go up because that's all that's going to happen. In the short run, though, we're seeing a huge influx of imports because we're importing the things that we're not producing. And that's why you're seeing the container ships, uh, you know, queued up, uh, you know, with these record uh, long lines. Uh, we are seeing trade deficits larger than any trade deficits we've ever seen, particularly in merchandise, manufactured stuff, unprecedented records. And this is a result of all this money printing. But none of it is economic growth. Don't confuse what's happening with a growing economy. There's no economic growth at all. We're spending printed money as the real economy contracts. So when we see potentially 6% GDP this year, we shouldn't be necessarily rejoicing. No, because you have to keep it into context. How did we get it? Oh, we borrowed a bunch of money and spent it. And where'd the borrowed money come from? Well, the Fed printed it. That is not a healthy economy. A healthy economy is when you don't need to run big deficits. Uh, it's, it's when the government is collecting taxes from businesses and individuals who are making more money and the government doesn't have to spend as much money to try to support the economy because it doesn't need this doesn't need to help. But when the government is spending record amounts of money on unemployment benefits and on other social spending programs, that does that's not a sign of a strong economy. When the trade deficits are at record highs, that's not a sign of a strong economy. So nothing about the economy is strength other than the printing of money. But you know, any country can print money. Unfortunately, when you do that, the result is a disaster. At least that's what's happened historically. And, and I they don't are, think right? We're not the only ones doing this. Well, I'm, I'm referring to other nations in the past that have basically tried to base their entire economy off of this concept. I mean, they're, all countries around the world are printing too much money, but they're not really doing what America is doing. You know, because our, our trade deficits are only possible because other countries have trade surpluses. So the countries that are running trade surpluses, well, they have viable economies. Their economies are actually growing because they're able to produce all this stuff that we're buying. It's the American economy that's not growing because we have to rely on what other economies that are growing produce because we're not producing. Um, but th this only works until the dollar crashes. And I think a dollar crash is, is, is coming our way uh, very soon. Do you think that there is uh, an end in sight for the rising prices of lumber and uh, building costs, building supplies? Well, um, in terms of U.S. dollars, probably not. Um, but yes, in terms of gold, sure, the prices are going to come down. But I think it's going to be a while before we see the price of any commodities coming down in dollars, at least in a significant way. I mean, sure, you know, there can be slight declines. But I think it's more likely that if we're going to see a decline, it'll be in the equity market, stock market. Uh, we had record highs recently 
in the U.S. stock markets. And so those prices, to me, if any prices are going to fall, it may be those, although even those prices may not go down in dollar terms. You know, you get enough inflation and the price of everything is going to go up. Uh, but that doesn't mean the value of those things are going up. In fact, you know, if you price them in gold or other uh, commodities or even other foreign currencies, you, you'll see a different uh, picture. You can see the markets really losing value even as the dollar price is going up. Well, it's really confusing because uh, on the one hand, the Fed or the government is saying that inflation is low and that, uh, you know, we can't hit the 2% target. And yet we in housing, we're seeing double digit, you know, increases and the stock market's gone up as well. So is it that all this money is going into stocks and real estate uh, or why, well, why aren't we seeing inflation? Well, we are. I mean, the government is trying its best to hide it from us. Uh, one of the ways they do that is by measuring it incorrectly with the CPI. Uh, that index is specifically designed to hide inflation, not to <laughs> reveal it. And so the way the, uh, the methodology for calculating the index was developed, it was developed in such a way that it would understate the degree to which consumer prices are rising. So that's one of the reasons you don't see it is because the government lies. Uh, but, you know, also... You know, companies try to find clever ways to avoid raising prices. You know, they 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 do other things. Uh, they uh, you know they, they they give you a smaller quantity. Uh, you know, they they substitute uh, lower quality ingredients. Look, my son just is flying to Puerto Rico today, and he told me that his suitcase was um, uh, six pounds overweight. And so, in addition to the thirty five dollars that he paid to check the bag. It was an extra $150 for the overweight fee. Now, I don't remember the fees being that high. Uh, and I, I think when the government measures the price of tickets, they don't look at those things like excess baggage charges. Uh, they just look at uh, the ticket. I mean, I remember when all the bags were free and now they charge you for checking bags. So, you know, that's probably not included in, in the CPI because they probably just look at the ticket price and they don't adjust for the fact that, well, now you don't get baggage. In fact, you don't even get a meal. If you're traveling in coach, you don't get anything. You don't get a pillow. You don't get a blanket. Uh, you know, they've really cut back on the quality of the service uh, so that they can avoid uh, having a bigger increase in the price. Then they have higher fees. If you want to change your flight, you want to you know, book a different time. So a lot of this stuff doesn't get incorporated in there. But also, you know, you talk about real estate. I mean, what's going on here in Puerto Rico is phenomenal. I mean, prices, I think, have literally doubled just in 2021, maybe tripled. Wow. Uh, it is absolutely insane what's happening. I guess it's not the entirety of Puerto Rico, but it is just uh, my neighborhood, my community. Uh, but literally, I mean, people are turning down offers, unsolicited offers of two to three times what they paid for their properties because they have nowhere to go if they if they sell. <laughs> so, I mean, so th this, and I know that the rest of the country is not this extreme, uh, but I've heard anecdotal evidence from other people, clients who are telling me what's going on in their local real estate markets. And, and this despite record numbers of Americans who are not in the workforce. So how are all these people who aren't working affording houses? <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, and how are they spending all this money? Well, we already know the answer. They're getting it from the government. But the only reason that money has value is because foreigners are still dumb enough to accept it in exchange for the stuff that they produce, because the stuff that they produce has real value. The money we print doesn't. Flee out of the midst of Babylon and deliver every man his soul. Be not cut off in her iniquity, for this is the time of the Lord's vengeance. He will render unto her a recompense. Babylon hath been a golden cup in the Lord's hand that made all the earth drunken. The nations have drunken of her wine, therefore the nations are mad. Babylon is suddenly fallen and destroyed. Howl for her. Take balm for her pain, if so be she may be healed. We would have healed Babylon, but she is not healed. Forsake her, and let us go every one into his own country. For her judgment reacheth unto heaven, and is lifted up even to the skies. The Lord hath brought forth our righteousness. Come, and let us declare in Zion the work of the Lord our God. 